Good afternoon, Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Sports Extra. I'm your host, Ahmed Nawaz, with the latest stand up of sports today. It could not get special than this. <coughs> what we're bringing for you today is absolutely phenomenal. Now, some of these guys are back home because this is not their first time. And of course, we had them on the show last year as well, where we got to discuss so many great things, not just about their international careers, but their time in Pakistan and also uh, what the future holds for Pakistan when you talk about the very popular sport of wrestling. All of us have grown up watching it, probably imitating as well, and probably breaking, I don't know, a gazillion bones trying to be one of these guys. So, you know, it's going to be absolutely special because uh, the uh, very, I must say, talented boys and girls on the show today are going to be talking about their experiences and what they've witnessed so far in Pakistan. And of course, I, I think on the on the uh, bigger side of this, they're here for a great cause as well. So we need to, of course, remember that and keep that into perspective. So I'll introduce them one by one. And of course, you'll be taken on this magical journey of wrestling itself. Finally back in Pakistan once again. Uh, he is the man, isn't he? Because probably I, I've never seen more fan following of anyone in wrestling than this guy in Pakistan. And the last time he came, after that, everybody's been asking crazy not just in studios in this building but all over when we go and meet people socially they've been asking when he's going to come back so he's none other than the very own tiny iron assalamu alaikum tiny yeah what's up my brother how are you yeah i'm fine bro. how does it feel to be back again bro you know it's been a I've been a, a long while man uh -huh. you know many things have happened in the world brother so i'm good that i can come and touch down in pakistan again but brother. you feel as if, if you're at home bro. oh bro it's like it's like um just walk through, man. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I'm Probably part of the more culture. used to the food by now. I'm part <laughs> of the culture now, brother. Part of the culture now. Part of the culture. Yeah. He certainly is. And of course, joining him, we've got another gentleman who's, of course, been making headlines ever since he's been here in Pakistan. I've been hearing rumors he's being offered some roles in movies as well here because of the uh, personality and the charisma he's been spreading all around the country. But of course, we're going to be talking to him. Adam Flex is joining us. Hello, Adam. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be back here. Uh, I came to Pakistan in 2017. Uh, and so when I got the message asking if I would what, like to come back again, I jumped at the opportunity. Uh, the people of Pakistan are some of the most welcoming uh, and some of the most passionate, especially for what we do. Uh, they give off great energy, which as a performer, as a wrestler, you need that to feed off, to give you that sort of atmosphere, you know, to, to mm -hmm. perform at your best. So I just want to say thank you to the people of Pakistan for always bringing incredible energy whenever we're, we're here. Well, thank you to you for coming. And of course, uh, I think to all you fans, I think this is what you've been waiting for. And this is something that dreams are made of. You know, you finally get to see some of these heroes you've seen on television, or like I said, imitated them. You finally see them on your mm -hmm. big screens. And obviously, if you're ringside, boy, I can't even explain that feeling. So I think uh, some of you lucky people who got to witness it are going to cherish it for the rest of your lives. And some of you who didn't can obviously catch a glimpse on television as well. And of course, through digital media platforms. Now moving on to the ladies themselves who are uh, giving equal competition when it comes to the sport itself and spreading their charisma all around the country as well. And there's been a lot of hype. And first of all, uh, this young lady uh, of French and Moroccan origin has uh, dominated her career when we talk about professional wrestling. And I, I'm sure that many young girls who got to witness her uh, live and of course have seen her perform here in Pakistan are going to be absolutely over the moon. And of course, they're going to be thinking about this as a professional career as well. And we're very lucky and honored to be joined by Amal Deb. Hello, how are you? Bonjour. <laughs> Bonjour. How are you? I'm really good. Thank how you is your time me. in Pakistan so far? It has been great. Like, people have been so welcoming. This is the first time I've been uh, mm -hmm. welcomed this way. Uh, and I'm really honored to be here to represent women. And as you said, if any girl, or even only one, wants to do what I'm doing by watching me, I'll be the the happiest in the world but you've got many fans so i think that's <laughs> going to be a treat to watch for those fans as well and of course uh, you know I, I i think explaining it is not that easy but, but you know we've lacked role models for this sport and of course when i move on then you'll be hearing a story from this one individual who's made success representing this country on the international level how hard it has been to find a role model in this country but now certainly we can look up to these guys who are the next generation of wrestlers who are coming from this country or this part of the world or the region. And then, of course, people can connect through that culture bond as well. And of course, moving on, we've got another fantastic lady uh, who's been here in Pakistan. She's enjoyed her time as well. We're going to be talking to her as well. And of course, uh, knowing uh, her professional career, where did it all start? Because you need that spark in life, right? So you've got to think, OK, I could have been this, I could have been that. But boy, I'm a wrestler now. So why was I a wrestler? Why, where did this 
career all start from. I think these things, of course, become very, very important. So we've been joined by none other than Miss May. Hello, how are you? Hi, thank you so much for having me. How, how have you been feeling whilst you've been in Pakistan and what's the response to the crowd you've witnessed? Oh, it's been amazing. So I've actually wrestled across North America and Europe and I've never experienced anything like Pakistan. It's my first time. And immediately when we got to the airport, fans were there with flowers. Everyone has been so warm and welcoming. And we had a press conference a couple of days ago and we got to make our entrances. And the atmosphere was just electric. It's everything you dream about mm -hmm. as a wrestler. And it just made me feel so special and so excited. So I'm really, really happy to be here. But Mariah, how does it feel when you get to inspire this next generation of young girls and boys to actually take this up as a professional sport? It's a very special <coughs> feeling because you talked a little bit just then about why we get into wrestling and mm -hmm. it's a lot of different reasons for different people but for me I always loved it as a child there were certain women I looked up to and I wanted to literally be just like them and so to know that there's a little girl in the audience that's smiling away thinking that could be me one day after shows when they come up to you and they want to just you're their hero. Mm -hmm. uh, it's such a special feeling and I hope that, you know, especially for Amal and I, yeah. it's about the little girls, mm -hmm. but, you know, the boys too, I hope that we do inspire them and we show them that if you have heart and determination, you can get anything that you want in life and you can chase your dreams. We're well, moving on <laughs> because we're talking about role models from this very region. Now, this guy has truly inspired so many people out there. Whenever we've had him on the show, it's been multiple times now, so obviously he feels at home as well. Uh, he's always talked about that passion and that drive and, of course, that you know, those lack of opportunities that have been there, but still he's transcended each and every one of those barriers and has made a name not only for himself, but a name where the country and each and every individual young boy and girl from this country can actually connect as well. And we're very proud to say that he's one of our own when all of them are, but he really truly represents that flag up high as well. None other than, than Pakistan's Bacha Khan. Assalamu alaikum. How are you, sir? Fine and you, sir. How, do, how does it feel? You're back once again, but with this star-studded cast that looks like probably we're shooting the Avengers once again. <laughs> how, how does it feel? Because like I said, you were here for a great cause this time. Yeah, actually, um, since um, actually back home in France, we didn't see anything about, you know, uh, the floods mm -hmm. uh, in Pakistan. Um, I only uh, s uh, saw on uh, social media yeah. and uh, uh, Pakistani media. So uh, we wanted to do something for them. So mm -hmm. we, we with Mr. Asmali Shah, Mr. Imran Shah, uh, chairman of uh, um, ROP and CEO of ROP, uh, we, we decided that why not we, we, we do something for them. So with the combination of them with DHA and Pak Forge, we are organizing two shows next month in DHA Multan nice. and uh, all the funds will go to them and uh, we are here to support them, to help them. We will do the maximum we can for them and um, inshallah we are with them so they can count on us. So well, Bacha, as a wrestler yourself, you faced problems and hurdles of a lack of platform. How special does Ring of Pakistan become when we talk about giving opportunities to the next generation? Actually, Ring of Pakistan is something, uh, for me, it's a combination of Lollywood and cricket. If you love Lollywood, mm -hmm. if you love cricket, Ring of Pakistan is the... Mm. Is the place to right. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely they are, but trust me, the management of Ring of Pakistan are a phenomenal bunch of guys themselves. You see these superstars in action, but they're the superstars behind the scenes. And I know each and every individual that has been involved. Personally, I've been witnessing their growth in their own careers and then the cause. You know, when you connect for a cause, it becomes greater than one's individual self. So I think that's been very special. But Tiny, because climate change is now a reality. And yeah. you know, to know the fact that Pakistan contributes less than 1% to carbon emissions globally, but is one of the most affected is scary. And I think it, you know, as our prime minister also mentioned that Pakistan is just the start. This is going to happen all around the world. How special was this cause? Oh man, you know, this is just a warning sign, but uh, I think the whole world needs to get the act together when it comes to the climate change and be prepared for uh, freak weather like how you experienced the freak weather mm -hmm. um, the other day. You know, so this cause is, is definitely an a eye-opener and to raise awareness that this can happen to you. Mm -hmm. You know, it happens to Pakistan, it could happen to you. You know, so we just need to, like, be careful what we do, you know, try and prepare for events like this. You know, like I said, the Pakistan army seem to be ready. Mm -hmm. They're ready to go. Quick response. Save many lives, brother. Mm -hmm. Save many lives, you know. So for me to actually go down and see what they're doing was like, yeah, yeah, you guys are doing your country very mm. proud, brother. That's the real stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's the real stuff. Mm -hmm. So 
everybody just needs to just be prepared, man, because mm. the world's going to change. It's going to keep changing, and we have to adapt. Absolutely. And try and be ready for the, the worst of mm. situations, brother. That's the thing about being humans. You evolve. You fight for the better. Every day is a survival, and that's what we're seeing happening. It's no more movies anymore. It's reality, oh. and that's what we've got to be ready for. But Adam, because you guys enjoy a huge fan following, so anything you put out becomes, in perspective, a greater cause. So how important is it because we see sports personalities and people like you around the world, if they get together for a cause, the effectiveness of it becomes even more greater than any other platform? I think, you know, collectively, all of us, you know, our platforms, you know, mm. together, it's a huge number of people uh, from different countries. So that's why I'm very proud to be here, uh, to use my own platform, you know, to spread the message of what's going on here in Pakistan and to get the support for the people of Pakistan. Because I think back in the UK, we hear about things on the news, but we don't really get to see, you know, mm -hmm. the, the true effect. Whereas yesterday we got to hear the statistics and then we actually got to go and see, you know, the disaster in person. Mm -hmm. And it was a real kind of reality check and eye opener for me which is why I want to obviously spread through my own platform, mm -hmm. as we all will, yeah. you know, what's going on here and try and get as much help and support to mm -hmm. the people of mm -hmm. Pakistan for, you know, for what they need. Uh, about a catastrophe like this, uh, you know, we don't see boundaries anymore. All of us are humans at the end of the mm -hmm. day. We share this planet. So we got to go beyond that sense exactly. of, look, I am a Pakistani, okay, he's from UK. That doesn't matter anymore because this is a fight we all got to fight together. Yeah, exactly. We, we are all human and mm. we need to support each other and help each other and that's why uh, we've been uh, to, s to support the, mm. the fluid uh, affected and I just want to say that was really heartbreaking to witness this uh, on person uh, and as he said we need to spread the world because when I was uh, back in France I didn't hear about this at mm -hmm. all and this is really huge like uh, you got to see it up front, what's exactly, happening. Exactly, yeah. like a big part of Pakistan uh, mm. is involved in this, so, yeah. Mm. That, that's true. I, I think uh, social media has been a very effective tool to highlight the devastation of these floods across the country. And of course, our heart goes out to the people who have been affected. And for those of us who had, you know, everybody can contribute in whatever sense they could. Some could be volunteers, some could be that financial support that you need. Some could be spreading the message through various platforms. Each and every one of us can play the role and that's why it becomes very, very, uh, you know, effective. Mirai, do you feel the same as well that, you know, together we can raise this as an alarm, not just for this scenario, but for times ahead? Because as Tiny mentioned, the world is changing. Amazing things happen when people work together. And like you said earlier, it's not at all your fault. It's actually more so the rest of the world's fault because we contribute more to global mm. warming. But regardless of any of that, we all have a responsibility, one, to save the planet, but two, directly right now, what is happening to Pakistan. To echo what Amal said, when you watch on the news at home, and I think as well, a lot of, especially our generation, are very into social media. Mm -hmm. They might not even watch the news. So if we can put our platforms together and we can share what we've seen firsthand, we've spoken to some of the survivors, we've spoken to the army, we've spoken to volunteers, we've learned the statistics, we've learned what's happened, we've learned what we can do. And like you said, even if we could just share it, if you don't have the money to donate, even if you could share it, maybe someone that you speak to can, because we all need to help, we all need to take action, and mm -hmm. we all have a great responsibility because no child deserves to not have a home, not have food, to be sick, to have diseases from the effects of this flood. That is all of our responsibility. So hopefully this makes people more more conscious and we can make a change. Do you also believe that because you guys have a huge fan following, this could be the most effective tool up till now? Um, I don't know if it could be the most effective, <laughs> but hey, fingers crossed. Like, I hope it makes a big impact. Um, you know, I don't want to toot our own horns and be like, we, you know, we'll make the change. But, you know, I think, yeah, we do have a responsibility through wrestling, mm -hmm. you know, which is great for us and rewarding for us. We've also got a great responsibility, too. And hopefully we can use that platform to spread this message. And I hope it does create a surge of change. And mm -hmm. I know for myself personally, and we were speaking about this last night after going, I'm going to put a lot more effort into researching things I can do independently outside of social media to continue to help mm -hmm. and keep making change. Definitely. Bacha, um when you, when you said that not many people in France were aware of the scale of the devastation in Pakistan. So now because you're involved and obviously you've been talking to not just them, many more people back home in France, uh, is the message spreading as it should? Yeah, we're trying our best to spread the message through social media. Mm. And uh, I have uh, not a huge, huge, huge fan following on social media, but the little I have, I'm trying my best. I'm posting every day, like uh, three to four times a day. Mm -hmm. So people back home, they know more about it. And so they can be, so they can come with us and support this cause because mm. this is something uh, very... Uh, unfortunate. Yeah. yeah. Very, very unfortunate as well. But obviously, 
This cause will continue. There have been various platforms, including the United Nations, who have now uh, upped the ante. They've actually changed their statistics and figures for the flash flood appeal for Pakistan. The figures have gone higher. The amount of dollars required for infrastructure redevelopment have gone higher. It's not just homes, it's schools, it's hospitals. Uh, you know, rebuilding is the most difficult part because these people eventually need to go back to their homes. And for them to go back to their homes, they need a home. They need that, you know, that lifestyle back or probably not that lifestyle. They need their environment, their cities back. And that's why the scale of the devastation we say is so huge that it needs to be adjusted. And that's why I think at this time, we of course are thankful to the Ring of Pakistan for actually uh, giving us this opportunity to have these superheroes uh, making a difference as well alongside all of us as well. And that's why it becomes very, very important. And of course, we talk about this on a global stage as well. Uh, but Tiny, uh, now of course, that is the most serious part of the discussion. Yeah, but then of course, there's that lighter part as well. <laughs> And I see that the, after a year as well, the yeah. bling has not lost its touch. <laughs> the fitness is still there. So that means we're getting younger by age. Bro, you know, uh, I'm just trying to keep myself well, keep myself healthy, brother. You know, keep myself trim, keep myself ready to go. Don't know when that phone's going to ring, brother. <laughs> we'll have to make that flight come down, you know, and show myself to the world, you know, show myself to the Pakistani people, mm -hmm. whoever, wherever I'm booked in the world, you know. So I'm always on point, always looking sharp, ready for that call, brother. What? How do you keep these things shiny as ever? Because that's got to be the most difficult yeah. part about being tiny. Brother, I, mean. brother, I think the studio lights help. <laughs> <laughs> so what, you know, one, one thing is absolutely crazy that uh, tiny still manages to keep all of that aggression and humor together, which is, I think, the most difficult part of uh, being a wrestler in your life that you've got to balance this out. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, you've got to love it because that's how his personality uh, is and that's how he's spreading the message. But, uh, Adam, is it the same? Because when the phone rings, you know, it's like a superhero is wearing his cape and you've got to be all ready and then on the next flight. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to look like Tiny. You know what I, mean? <laughs> but I, I can't eat as, enough, um, as, as much as he does. But, um, yeah, you know, for me personally, I always try and, uh, you know, stay in top shape. I don't think people understand really how much goes into being a professional wrestler. Uh, you know, it's a 24-7 it's a thing. It's 365. There's... Mm -hmm. Other sports, there's off seasons where you have time to recover. Whereas with wrestling, if you want to, if you want to do it at the top and at the top level, it's every day. Mm -hmm. So you've got to live and breathe it, and you know that's what I'm so passionate about, and it's what I, I love and enjoy doing. So I think that's the most critical part because all of us see that entertainment. Uh, most of us don't see uh, scenes that are, uh, of course, on the back end, and of course you've got to think about a mal injuries, recovering from those injuries, and then of course that mental toll of being a wrestler as well. Yeah, exactly. Like we say, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready, right? <laughs> so whenever the opportunities knock on your door, you have to be there mm. and uh, get it. So yeah, we train every day. Um, it's full-time job. Uh, you think about it every day as well. Like mm. all you do is thinking, uh, eating, wrestling, mm. uh, beating someone up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, so yeah. So how important does the diet routine come in between that? That's very important, isn't it? It is really important. Uh, I think it's more important than like even going to the gym because mm -hmm. if you go to the gym and then you don't diet, mm. you cannot. You get can mess up. The, yeah, you, <laughs> you, you can mess up. But I think up. about talking about balancing eating, uh, your role model should be Tiny Iron because <laughs> he's the one who's balancing it out right now. <laughs> he's been keeping it on a on a pressure note, you know eating uh, all he can, but at the same time, staying in shape. I, I think that's the bling. That's the real bling and the secret that he's got. Uh, but Mariah, uh, of course, career itself, how did it all spark? Uh, when was the time when you learned that, okay, I'm going to be a professional wrestler? So I've always wanted to be a wrestler since I was like a little kid. And I feel like the older I got, you know, going through school, they're like, no, but you need to pick some, you know, like maybe a teacher or a doctor. And mm. I was like, wrestling. Um, and then when I finished school, I, I'm an actress as well, so I actually did a TV show and mm -hmm. I was doing theatre, but I just had this itch, like I was missing something, <laughs> you know, beating someone up. And I actually found a local school, I went down and the rest is history and we talk about balance. At that time I was working a full-time office job, going to the gym every day, working a weekend job and training mm. until I could actually become... Talk about multi-careers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> until I could actually, you know, fully become a superhero and, and become a full-time wrestler. And yeah, like Amal says, it's always on your mind, there's always something you can be working on and it's just very exciting, yeah. But it's good that rather than slamming someone on the table of the office, you took it <laughs> as a ring. So I, guess I can't I, say I've never done that. <laughs> <laughs> that, would have, that would have been fun if we would have been able to probably get some CCTV footage out from the from our days in the office. That would have been great as well. But Bacha, how's the training routine now? Of course, injuries are part of this, yeah. but uh, it's a 24-7 job. 
Yeah, you have to stay in shape uh, 365 uh, days, uh, days a year because you can be booked any day, any time. So you have to be, because uh, <coughs> uh, me, I got, um, I got injured three years ago. My mm. PCL got damaged. I got a neck injury. Uh, my back is uh, like this. People back is like this. No people, <laughs> no person. No. Mine is like this. No. So when I walk, I'm like this. I feel like I'm 60, 70 years old already, but I'm, I'm just 29. Mm. So it's a very difficult job. Uh, you have to be passionate. You have to be half the heart with, with that. Mm -hmm. And um, where I, since three years, I didn't wrestle. I didn't wrestle. I was like, I take a break, mm -hmm. three years. Blah, you blah, can blah. recover. Yeah, yeah I have to recover. But I got a call. Bro, we need you in Pakistan. <laughs> Ring of Pakistan is back. We need the bacha and stuff. And then I was like, yeah, man, Tiny is here, so I have to be here, man. <laughs> <laughs> but you are the king. And you know the yeah. subjects need the king. Anyway. Yeah, but the king has to... Um, to face the the other king over there, yeah. uh, the big guy over there. The so real king. <laughs> yeah, the real king. Yeah. I was gonna say the real king, but you know, uh, I'm I'm actually uh, astonished when Bacha talks about his back being like this because I'm 29, but my back's like this. <laughs> so I don't. I, I'm glad I don't have those problems. But but tiny, if we, when we recall this illustrious career, there yeah. are ups and downs and hurdles, and you know there are good days and then there are bad days. Yeah. What's been the biggest challenge? Oh um trying to mix wrestling with family life you know oh yeah yeah because you're always away from home you know so you don't really get to see your your, your little ones grow you know and you always have to leave them behind mm -hmm. and you feel a bit guilty but you know there's a you know when my, my little daughter watches me on tv all the time so she's like wow at least my daddy's in the box mm. you know <laughs> so when she goes to school yeah my daddy's in that box in the box yeah that's me yeah <laughs> you know so i'm doing a good cause you know i'm mm. just trying to just uh do the best thing can in life you know brother you know this is my dream, bro. You know, I have to live my dream, man. We only get one life, mm. one shot at it, one shot at it, brother. So I have to do what I have to do, bro. So do we see a next generation of tiny wrestlers? Oh, yes, of course, of course, <laughs> of course, of course. Not just daddy in the box. No, 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 yeah. not daddy in the box. They'll be the, the next two of them coming, coming through, brother, man. <laughs> well, uh, you know, at least they get to inherit all of this bling and bring <laughs> it out as well. So that, that's one thing to be proud of. But wh why shouldn't you be? I think if... Uh, uh, but at the same time, Adam, it becomes important because you need supportive families. It can't happen without that. So they've got a role to play as well as far as you do. Yeah, so when I said to my, my mom that I wanted to be a professional wrestler, she initially was maybe a little bit like, really, you know, is this really a career that you can... But I think she saw that it was what I was passionate about and what I really wanted to do. And I think mm -hmm. as a supportive parent, that is what you want for your children. You want them to pursue their passions. So. I think, you know, for the first year or so, she was a little bit like, you know, you may have to consider other career options, but then she saw that it became my full-time job and I was mm -hmm. getting a lot of exposure and then wrestling in England and other places, coming to Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And I think she started to take it more seriously mm -hmm. then and um, she then did admit that she always believed in me from the start, but she just kind of was waiting to see if it's what I really wanted to do. But I think that's, you know, I didn't think it was possible because being in Ireland, I never really saw anyone going to a big wrestling company, but... Then I saw Seamus, for example, going to WWE, yeah. mm. and it kind of opened my eyes that, okay, people from different places. I always thought you had to be mm. from America to, mm. to make it in wrestling, but then I got to see that people from different countries could make it, and that's what then gave me the passion to start my training, and I've never looked back ever since. But that's a very important point that you mentioned, that because you had one role model in Seamus, imagine that any other guy, for example, like you from Ireland, could inspire probably the next generation of people who can connect that Ireland can make it on the big stage mm -hmm. as well. And that's something that I take pride in is, you know, I, you never know who's watching your matches or mm. I wrestle quite a lot in front of young children and families uh, at holiday camps back in the mm -hmm. UK. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, you see the sort of excitement and amazement in their eyes and you meet them after when you're signing their autographs and they say, you know, I want to be a wrestler like you and mm. when I grew up. So when I tell them, you know, if it's what you want to do, then, you know, just focus on it and you can make anything happen if it's what you really want to do. So how's the response in Ireland? The response, uh, you know, wrestling's actually starting to pick up in Ireland mm -hmm. as well. You know, the UK has a really good um, fiery scene. There's a lot of promotions, scene, but... Yeah. Um, there's a big company in Ireland called Over the Top Wrestling, which is really starting to bring in. Uh, Tiny's been there before as well, mm. and it's starting to bring in a lot of international stars. So Ireland is definitely on the on the up. Mm -hmm. That that's great to see. I think when you talk about the development and the evolution of wrestling spreading to all of these regions, I think it's absolutely phenomenal. And that's what these heroes are all about. So Amal, when did you figure out that okay, I'm going <laughs> to wrestle? So when I was younger, my father used to watch wrestling all the time. Mm. He was a huge fan. So I started watching with him and I fall in love with him uh, with wrestling and I just told him that I want to be a professional mm. wrestler. And he said, no. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, no. <laughs> he said, no, you're going to go to law school, you're mm. going to graduate and stuff like that. 
So uh, yeah, I went to law school, I graduate, uh, I became a teacher and then I wasn't really happy, something was missing and uh, that was wrestling. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing that really made me feel alive was wrestling. Mm. So I got back to it, I trained every day as much as possible and I made it. Uh, I signed with WWE, um, I traveled the world and um, I want to uh, spread that message as well. Mm -hmm. um, my wrestling name is French Hope because mm. my name is Hope in Arabic. Yeah. Uh, so I want to give hope back to every little girls around the world that mm -hmm. have been told no, uh, you cannot do this or that because you look like this or you from this place. Um, and uh, I want to change uh, the way people see this. That's almost poetic. I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, that, that takes you to another level and you start thinking about you know, her, probably her career and her life flashes in front of your eyes. <laughs> but one thing is for sure that you never wanted to fight a legal battle. You always wanted to fight in the ring. So it was never being <laughs> about a teacher or a lawyer. It was always about being uh, in that ring with that intensity. But, but these hurdles can never stop you, can they, uh, Mariah? Because obviously, uh, right now, people are so confused and disoriented. And of course, with the pandemic and everything that's been on the negative side, people have started losing hope. So probably one thing that they can learn from your experiences or everybody who's told us their uh, ex life experiences is that all you need to do is believe. Yeah, definitely. I mean, for us in the UK and every country handled things a little bit differently, but we were locked down for almost two years. Yeah. And I had just started my career. So I started when I was about 19, 20 years old. I'd done a year and I got booked, you know, all over Europe and I was so excited. I just started and then boom, <laughs> no one is allowed to leave the house. And it was really tough for me because I felt like I was finally starting to find my feet with wrestling and, you know, everything got cut off. But I just adapted. You know, mm -hmm. you talk about hope. So I was like, well, what can I do? How can I make Mariah May a megastar? So I just went to social media. I focused on my modeling more. I do my YouTube and, and, and things like that just to try and build a fan base and connect with people because ultimately wrestling is about connecting with someone. Mm -hmm. And so for almost two years, I just tried to connect with people through that. And then the minute I got back after COVID, I was just straight to it, traveling everywhere, wrestling everywhere, <laughs> Double training. Time now. <laughs> yes, I used to drive up and down the country to just train every single day and put mm. everything into it um, because I had hope. You know, mm. I had a dream, I have hope. And now I'm here in Pakistan, which is just a dream come yeah. true. Well, so. they, they even uh, tried, uh, you know, going through the pandemic without fans. And that was disastrous. I could never <laughs> imagine wrestling without fans. Having cardboards in the stands, I mean, are you serious? Is that really happening? So I'm glad that th those days are over. We're finally back to contact sports. You know, probably Tiny throwing people in the crowd <laughs> and pulling people from the crowds. You know, <laughs> Things like these make it more fun. And I think that's why it becomes very, very special. Uh, but Bachat, you've got, when you talk about wrestling all over the world, there's a huge fan base. In Pakistan, it just started developing since the last couple of years and a big credit goes to Ring of Pakistan at the same time. But now do you see that fan base building up where people after every event are very eager to have the next one? Yeah, because uh, first time we did shows in uh, 2017, we had like uh, 2,000 people. Um, and uh, in 2018, when we came back, it mm -hmm. was like five, 6,000 people. But uh, when we came back in 2019, it's like 40,000 people. So uh, do the calculation. It means <laughs> that next ne next month it will be 80,000 people. So it will be like a WrestleMania. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, two WrestleMania back to back in Multan. Maybe you you will see that. So people really like wrestling. What here. do you mean maybe? I need to be ringside with you. That <laughs> yeah. maybe maybe we, I, I don't know yet because uh, the, we don't the, we didn't finalize the, the, the dates yet. Uh, tickets are, are, aren't uh, online yet so mm -hmm. we are waiting. Um, wrestling, there is a huge demand in wrestling. Huge, huge demand in wrestling uh, from Pakistan, from Pakistani people. Mm -hmm. But the thing is there was nobody, nobody, uh, no promotion who can satisfy, satisfy the demand. So mm -hmm. that's why since 2014, I tried my best to bring pro wrestling to Pakistan. And uh, Alhamdulillah, in 2016, I met a beautiful guy, a nice guy, whose name is Peter, uh, Sayyid Asim Risha. He's from Islamabad. Yes, he I is. meet uh, his uh, brother, Imran Shah. So together, uh, both of them and me, we, with our combination, we created Ring of Pakistan. And since 2017, we are here. And uh, I can bring my friends over there. Mm -hmm. And my, my, this is my brothers and sisters and aunties and uncles. <laughs> <laughs> he's calling you his uncle. Yeah. 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 He's the uncle. He's, uh, he's the uncle. <laughs> and I'm uh, bringing my families there over uh, here to, 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 to wrestle. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, 
um, not only to wrestle but to entertain the whole um, country mm -hmm. but also to show back home in France in Europe USA all over the world that Pakistan is a beautiful country Pakistan is open for business and Pakistan is safe for everything absolutely that's a very beautiful message mm -hmm. that Bacha gives but you know uh, two things in perspective first of all let me tell you about the personality of Pisa because we've often uh, seen that that don't be fooled uh, by the modesty you see there's a complete wrestler in him as well where, which can drive sports and promote all of these things but a beautiful human being himself and uh, when you talk about the entire family the cause is always Pakistan first so th I think that's what I love about this family that dedication honesty and patriotism will always be there for Pakistan and that's how some of these families are the reason why this great country still stands and progresses even after every difficulty that is thrown at, uh, at our people and at our country. So we owe a big deal uh, to Peer Sahib's family and of course in the ring of Pakistan and their management in general. But uh, Tiny, I'll take final messages but before that I do want to mention that he called you an uncle but uncle can give a spanking anytime. <laughs> yeah. 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 I like you man, you're very cool. You're very so cool. I can probably hit a ride with you now. <laughs> yeah, but we're cool man, we're cool man. Yeah, so what's your message to your fans? Um, just uh, November, mm. just be ready man. Ring of Pakistan. We're back, and we're back with a good cause, and we're back to make things happen again, brother. So we're, yeah, Pakistan, Zindabad. Zindabad. Adam, what's your message to people I just, out there? I remember, obviously, the first time I was here, how I felt when I walked out in front of that crowd, the passion, and I feel like this time there's going to be even more people, and honestly, I'm just excited to get home, get my wrestling gear, and get back on a flight over here and mm. perform in front of an even bigger crowd, in front of the people of Pakistan. I can't wait. Absolutely. Well, Amal, the stage is set. Do you have a message for your fans out there? Uh, I'm so honored and so glad uh, that we're going to do that show and ho I hope I'll see you all there very soon and uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, keep on supporting as well and uh, you know, it's going to be fantastic. Like I said, the stage is set and of course, uh, Mariah, final message to your fans out there are going to be waiting to see you perform. I'm so excited to debut for Ring of Pakistan and I just hope that I can inspire all the little girls and women in the audience that you can make your dreams come true. Mm, definitely, from an office worker to a wrestler, yeah. I think <laughs> that's a, such a static change in your career. But like I said, uh, you know, some stuff that dreams are made up of and you can see that. But so the platform is set. What's your final message on behalf of Ring of Pakistan and everybody involved? Guys, be there because I'm going to smash my opponents, especially uh, the big guy, you know, the big half man, half amazing. And he always say that he's half man, half amazing, half Pakistani. I will move the Pakistani in him and I will be the 100% Pakistani. So be there. Nice. Tiny versus Bacha next month. DHA Multan for the ROP. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uncle Adam. Yeah, yeah, Uncle, <laughs> Uncle, you are finished. <laughs> <laughs> well, he can be all the talk he wants, but I know Tiny is just uh, the calm he, before the storm. He is the guy. I have a back like this. <laughs> I have to take revenge in Pakistan. I have to take revenge. Well, Big maybe you can slam. correct that back now. Yeah, thank you. I'll slam it back. <laughs> 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 thank thank you very much, uh, thank you. Tiny, Adam, Amal, thank you. Thank and you. Mariah, and Bacha. It's thank been absolutely superb. I mean, thank you to Ring of Pakistan for bringing us this exclusive content and you know absolutely fantastic show and we've all had a great time but I think all of you need to stay connected to their social media platforms to wait for the date when all of these events are happening and you can't miss it trust me if you miss this one there's not another lifetime where you can get all of this in one go so you probably need to stay connected from me all of these superheroes and everybody involved from the ring of Pakistan and my <coughs> team here at Sports Extra until our next show it's goodbye for now